welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method. I am so excited to do this lesson for so, so many reasons. Uh, number one, um, Franklin's Tower is by far, I think, the best uh, palette for any um, improv guitar player plays jam band stuff to, to work on because it's such a, a great chord progression. It's nice and easy, blah, 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 blah. It's so much fun to solo on. Number two, um, my friend Brian gave me this guitar. This is a, uh, a Fred guitar. It's a Tranastasio uh, copy guitar, and I'm going to be playing it for this lesson, and the thing is really mean. It's awesome. So uh, even though I'm doing The Grateful Dead, I'm playing a Tranastasio guitar. It doesn't matter. Uh, number three, this is going to open up uh, a lot of things that we haven't seen yet in terms of soloing with uh, Franklin's Tower. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of Franklin's Tower first and foremost. Uh, the chord progression itself, um, God, we're just moving into it. Okay, the chord progression itself, a very simple chord progression to understand. It's an A, I'm sure you guys know this, I should turn my distortion off, right? That'd be good. Uh, it's an A major uh, to a G and then to a D and back to a G in some sort of fashion like this, like... over and over again. And you can play these chords anywhere. Uh, so now let's just talk about that chord progression. If we look at it, uh, A, G, and D, we have a combination of ones, fours, and fives. But more importantly, it's in the key of D. And by the key of D, I mean the chords come from the uh, key of the D major scale. And the one chord is the D, the four chord is the A, uh, sorry, the G, and the five chord is the A. So we have this progression that starts on the A, which is chord number five. Now, if you see my uh, modes video or my relative major minor, um, the chord progression itself gives you the modal progression. So when you start on a five, like you're starting on the A, uh, this is called a mixolydian progression. Now, a lot of people will say, hey, we're going to use the uh, A mixolydian scale to solo over this, which we kind of do, but there's so much more that Jerry Garcia does, which is why I'm very excited to do this. So if we were to write this um, uh, numerical progression down a piece of paper, it'd be a 5, 4, 1, 4, and, back, and it starts over and over again. So the fact that we start on the 5, we have this A mixolydian progression. So which means we're going to use an A mixolydian scale, which I'm sure we've seen or we've heard over the years, this is the scale we use, which is true. But just, let's just take a look at what the A mixolydian scale really is. Well, the A mixolydian scale, just like the chord progression itself, is the D major scale started on the fifth note. So if I took a D major scale anywhere, kind of like here, and I just started, I, well, I, I played D major scale, I go one, two, three, four, five, if I mentally make this home, this is an A, okay, that's the A, it's the fifth. If I mentally make this home and I just travel through my D major scale, but I start here, that becomes an A mixolydian scale. So the A mixolydian scale is a D major scale, just to let you know. But since we're starting an A mixolydian progression, we think of it as an A mixolydian scale, which is great. So is Jerry Garcia. But where does Jerry Garcia differ? Before we get to that, we should really... Um, listen to a Mixolydian solo on top of this, which is what we usually get. And again, this is why I made this video. I'm going to turn my distortion back on. I have my looper set. And when you see, or when you hear someone say, play an A Mixolydian, it does sound good. It doesn't sound bad at all. I mean, it's an A Mixolydian progression with an A Mixolydian scale. It's going to be great. But it doesn't sound like Jerry Garcia just yet. So here is the, the loop. Let's see. All right. Like that. And now my A Mixolydian scale. Let's see. sounds great. And everyone does this. We go up and down the neck. We go all the way up and down the neck with A Mix Lydian, and it sounds good. But when we hear Jerry Garcia do it, something else happens. So what is he doing? Well, before we, before this happens, I'm going to see if I can do this all in one take, which I probably can't because I wasn't prepared here, is we're going to listen to, together, uh, I'll have my phone out, we're going to listen to Jerry Garcia's solo, and I have a... Uh, I have a show here. It's uh, the Great American Music Hall, San Francisco. Uh, the date is August 13th, 1975. And um, it looks like it's a, is it a Dick's Picks? Uh, it might be. No, it's not. Okay, so August 13th, 1975. And we're just going to listen to Jerry Garcia play a solo. Let's see. Okay, here it is. Okay. Here we go. Together, listen.
I'm not there. Okay, so you, um, when you hear that, yes, it does have essences or essences or of of uh, of Jerry Garcia and also of the Mixolydian, but we can tell if something else happening here. So what's happening? Well, let's get your guitars if you don't already have them, and let's go over what what is really happening here. We're gonna play uh, the A Mixolydian scale up here, and the chart below, by the way, is gonna have um, this guy and another guy with everything we do here. And this is probably gonna be a long video, but here we go. So the A Mixolydian scale is really a D major scale. So where's our D major scale? Well, we have a D right here on the 17th fret of the A string, and we have a D chord right here. So we're gonna play this C-shaped scale. Now from the thickest, note to the thinnest. It is 14, 15, 17, 14, 16, 17, 14, 16, 17, 14, 16, 14, 15, uh, 17, and 14, 15, 17. Now this D major scale, again, is an A mixolydian scale if you just start on the A. So here's my A, all right? And if I just play, And I go from an A to an A. There's an A on the 14th fret of the G string. There's also an A on the 15th, uh, sorry, 17th fret of both E strings. So here's what I do. I'm, again, I'm gonna, now I'm just going to play the A mix leading up here. You can hear it's going to sound fine. Okay, it sounds fine. And every time we play Mixolydian again, it sounds absolutely fine. <laughs> if I just turn my, my looper off, there it is. Okay. So, uh, if we play our A Mixolydian scale, it sounds fine, but we can hear something else is happening. Well, what's happening? Well, you guys are going to listen to the song again, uh, what I just showed you. And But what we're listening for right now is the fact that Jerry Garcia is not playing necessarily just an A Mixolydian scale. He's playing with his chord tones, too. And that's very, very important. And when you listen to the solo I played with you, or we listened to together, we heard Jerry Garcia and we imagined him just flying in one linear line, right? Just one linear th type of movement. But when we, now when we play back, what's really happening is he's focusing on the chords. Now, yes, we do have a G chord that's stuck in the middle, but we have an A chord that pivots on the G chord and goes to the D, and that D pivots back from the G and goes to the A. The two pivotal moments in the song are the A and the D chord. Now, I want you to listen to the song again. And I want you to focus on the fact that Jerry Garcia is really changing or his phrasing around the chord tones. Now, to do this, I use the visual aid. And that visual aid is my wife and my, my cat, Quinn. And don't worry, they actually both enjoyed it. Give a listen. Uh, the cat was fine, Jenny, my wife, she loved it. So anyway, onward. If you go, need to go back, you heard what was happening was when the band was on the A, Jerry Garcia was highlighting the A moment. And then when he went to the D, he was highlighting the D moment. Yes, he's using the Mixolydian scale. So now how do we do that? Now this is just like part one of this part one. Hope you're enjoying it. All right, so the A chord is this G-shaped A chord here. I'm gonna use the thin end. So you put your first finger on the, 12, on the 14th fret, you're gonna bar it right here and you're gonna put your pinky up on the 17th fret. Now this is a G-shaped A chord. My root note is here, so this is A. Volume is always good. And then my D chord is that C shape I showed you here. Okay. So really, okay, we have the A going to the D. By the way, part two and part three of this video, which will be coming out later uh, in the month, um, are gonna address his chord changing with the G chord, his pentatonics, everything. Just kind of going slowly but with the most potent part of the soloing. So we have the A chord here and the D chord here. All right. And now this D major scale slash A mixolydian scale, however you want to see it, both have the chord tones for each one of these chords. When I play the scale, this has the chord tones for this and it has the chord tones for this. So now listen as I solo, but now I pause or I start 
on a chord tone using the A mixolydian scale because we need to, right? We already talked about that, but highlighting the chord tone. Let's give it a listen. And there's my A, there's my D. Here we go. There we go, volume is good. screwed up there but nonetheless it's a good example so now we're almost there so step number one mixolydian scale definitely the basis for soloing for franklin's tower step number two getting your chord tones focused on inside inside of your um uh, mixolydian scale the a major chord tones and the d major chord tones but i'll do it again for you but when you listen it doesn't sound exactly like Jerry Garcia. I'll do it again. I kind of screwed up a little bit. Here we go. So here's your A. D. A. D. A. D. A. D. Good. Okay, that was a little bit better. So now, where is... Step number three, or Jerry's secret sauce. And this is why I wanted to do the lesson, because everything that um, is out there on the web pretty much addresses these things, except for this, I think. All right, Jerry Garcia was a bluegrass player, okay? He loved bluegrass. So the sound of Jerry Garcia, in my opinion, are these executed moves that take him back to his bluegrass mindset. So what do I mean by that? Well, on my channel, I have a video called like Famous Mistakes uh, in Music or the Country Music, and it's just a way for you to understand how country music comes about. But in country music, it is very common, it's actually the thing to do, where we play what's called um, the major blues scale, okay? And now what happens here is uh, we have an A major scale, and I'm going to show you this very, very carefully. You can follow along. This doesn't need to be in the chart. This is just a derivative. We have an A major scale. Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Again, I have my volume turned on all the time, okay? So I have... There it is. That's an A major scale. But in bluegrass, the most common thing to do, and I've addressed this in my Peggio video, is to put the minor third in. Uh, okay? Right there. There. And here. And this looks like the blues scale that we use in music, uh, in the blues, but when you play it on top of a major chord, it becomes this, this major blues scale or country scale. So if you listen carefully, I'm going to some blue. There it is right there. That minor third that doesn't belong in uh, a major chord, but in bluegrass, the sound of bluegrass and blues is that minor third on top of. Um, on, on top of the major chord progression. So where is this all going, Ian? I know. I'll show you. If you take that mixolydian scale, the D mixolydian. Uh, uh, sorry. There it is. And you find your root note. I'm going to find this one. Left, or my, my mixolydian root note. There it is. There's the A. If you listen, the minor third in the scale. There's the one. There's the two. And there's your minor third. And this note is not in any of the scales that, that have been discussed. This note is in the blue scales or a bluegrass scale, the minor third of the tonic or whatever note you're going to. So now just listen to when on the A, on the A now, I'm going to play the chord tones, but I'm also going to play the minor third, which is a bluegrass trick, which is what Jerry Garcia grew up on. So now here's the example of playing the mixolydian with the minor third. Okay, or I can do it right, right? Here we go. There's a D, here's the A. So now you can start to hear a little bit of Jerry, Jerry Garcia pop out. 
he's throwing in what we call a Mixodorian scale, which I'm sure we've all heard before. But the problem is when you have a Mixodorian scale, we don't know what to do with it. Sorry, my phone just went off. All right, so what we do with this is that we have a Mixolydian scale. We have A, Mixolydian. But the Dorian scale is pretty much we, the minor version of a Mixolydian has a flat three. Hence, when you bring the flat three in, this thing gets named a Mixodorian scale. This will all be on the chart below. But what happens here is we take our regular Mixolydian scale, okay, and we're putting the minor third of the A in, okay, which is, oh, which is a C. I, why I had to figure that out, I have no idea. So now... Okay. So the minor third is so important to Jerry Garcia's playing inside of this Mixolydian scale, but it doesn't stop here. Again, I hope you're enjoying this. Rewind this if you need to. Um, on the D chord itself, same thing. On the D, he's playing, really, it's still the D major scale, okay? But what happens here is he's focusing on the chord tones, the D, but here's my D here, and here is the minor third to the D major chord. Again, the bluegrass sound. So when he's on the A, he's focusing on his A Mixolydian scale. He's throwing in the minor third, which is the, the bluegrass scale that he was so used to. And then when he goes to the D chord, he's playing the D major scale, which is the same scale, but it's a different minor third now. It's what? There it is. It's always uh, the, the root note, the major second, then the minor third. And here, okay, so if you look at this D major chord, and again, this will all be in the chart, I promise, is you have your D major scale starting from the 17th fret. You have, usually would have 17, 14, 16, 17, and those would be a 1, a 2, and a 3. But with Jerry Garcia, he throws in that note there. It's the same note. So now, where is all this going? And I hope you're enjoying this. In Franklin's Tower, for, the, for part one, I know we haven't even addressed the G chord yet. We will in part two. This video will be three hours long. It's huge. But when you're beginning to solo on Franken's Tower, the A Mixolydian scale is going to take you to a good place, and you're going to feel confident. But when you listen to Jerry Garcia, something else is happening in his soloing on this. And what he's doing is A, he's changing his chord tones. The A major chords for the A scale, uh, sorry, yeah, the A major chord tones for the A chord and the D major chord tones for the D chord, all inside that scale. But to get that sound, that Jerry Garcia sound, he brings in the minor third of the chord we're playing into the scale. All right, now I hope this all made sense. Again, the diagrams below will absolutely, in the description box, locate everything for you. I'll do it in two places, but now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play uh, just, you'll see me layer. Okay, so here is Franklin's Tower, A, G, no, it's A to D, okay? There's my A and D. And so now if I'm soloing just an A mix lit in, Focus on the chord tones. Okay, you can hear it, it gets a little more poignant. Now I'm going to bring in the minor third. Uh, or the bluegrass scale, or the Mixodorian scale, however you want to think about it, bring the minor third in, and you want to bring the minor third back to the to the note, the, uh, like the A, minor third to the A, and the minor third to the D. And you get this really good Jerry Garcia sound. Let's see, let's see. Jerry Garcia pop. 
Now, before we get going, this is going to be a super long video. I know it went really fast, and it's already 20 minutes, and it's probably like a whirlwind. Uh, one, uh, not one quick thing. Let's just recap everything you need to do. A mixolydian saved the day. Fantastic. All right. The chord tones between A major and D major inside the mixolydian scale is going uh, to save the day even more. And then adding the bluegrass note, the minor third of each chord as you play is start is going to start giving you that that iconic Jerry Garcia signature note choice. Now I know that my guitar doesn't sound like Jerry because this is actually a Tranestasia copy and I'm playing through a tube screamer. But the point is, is that this is going to enhance your playing. Part two is going to address the G uh, chord in there and also how he attacks his pentatonics on the scale, which he does. Uh, thank you for joining in. I hope this helped and didn't go too fast and wasn't a whirlwind of, um, of a lesson. Uh, the charts below will have everything in at least two places so that you can start jamming to this with confidence and part two will be coming out and uh, my wife and cat were not harmed in the filming of this video. Have a good day. Um.